coming back from the dead really builds up a thirst. Who's up for a smoothie? This is the second episode in a row that picks up from a previous plotline in a non-traditional two-part episode setup. I enjoy when the show continues to explore its storylines without needing to form a whole arc around it. Charmcaster overthrows Ledger Domain with the Alpha Rune and sacrifices 600,000 souls, including the trios, to resurrect her father. It's never explained how the Alpha Rune can still exist after being forged into the map of Infinity. It's tiresome that the show keeps forcing you to not care about its own lore just to make the plots make sense. Then it turns around and makes a lore-heavy move like this. I've written a spell that uses a predictive decryption algorithm on the computer to figure out the true name of Ledger Domain before it changes. Which is cool, but it's still whiplash with how much it cares about one thing but ignores the other. It's kinda comical how many L's Chromastone takes, that now it's just expected. I also get that not only does Charmcaster have the Alpha Rune, but also has all the powers of the Ledger Domain inhabitants she's slain, but she still doesn't actually feel powerful enough to successfully kill the trio, especially when Gwen goes full and Anodite. Perhaps if there was at least a more visual difference in Charmcaster's abilities, it'd be more believable, but I'm sure this machine had a lot to do with it. Subtly tying Dagon to the story by showing his lifestyle outside of his own arc was a really cool move. The fact that Dagon returned the stolen powers when the deal was off really stands out to me. This is the last time that Hex is shown as a villain. I actually started a thread asking why folks were okay with Hex being redeemed in Omniverse, but not Charmcaster. Commenters advocated for Hex saying he seemingly stepped away from evil in UA. I have confidence that those defending Hex didn't rewatch this episode to make sure. You're about to face a final, crushing defeat. He only cooperates with Gwen for the sake of Charmcaster, not due to him renouncing evil. Although, it is nice to have him show genuine care for Charmcaster after initially treating her like a pawn in Classic. And to sum up this upcoming point briefly, the existence of Ignatius makes everything about the rock monsters extremely weird and inconsistent. He's also a pretty pointless character too, as Adwecha probably could have supplied any info that Ignatius did anyways. This episode also mentions an off-screen adventure where the trio tried to team up with Dr. Animo, which I would have loved to see. Although it also mentions that Vilgax died trying to kill the trio, which also doesn't make any sense. We saved his whole planet, and he died trying to kill us. But the saving grace of this episode is Charmcaster's moment with her father, Spellbinder. In a few brief moments, it speaks a lot about the true motivations behind her character. I sacrificed every living thing in Ledger Domain, all for you! You did what? She seems incapable of realizing how corrupted her actions have become in her blind ambition, and it's only when her father rejects her ways does she realize what a true villain she's become. You became a worse tyrant than Edwecha ever was. It's heartbreaking to see her succeed in her goals just to have her own father tell her that she was wrong this entire time. I gave my life so that you could be free of all this. How could you even conceive of something so evil? I do wish we got to know Spellbinder a bit more, but there's not really a place for that. But the moment at the end when Kevin relates to Charmcaster... She lived her whole life chasing after one thing. How do you fill that void? It ain't easy, trust me. ...reveals a lot of unexplored similarities between these two. I appreciate the idea to pull out the Lucky Girl costume again, but she uses it so sparingly, it's more questionable than enjoyable. I love that we're finally seeing Ben's new UA aliens shown off more, but with their constant teases and admittedly uninspiring designs, the excitement for them is born from low expectations. The animation is alright, but the action itself isn't as stimulating as what we've been getting lately. This episode establishes Charmcaster's rule over Ledger Domain, and also follows up on a previous plotline. Both of these play into her future arc in Omniverse, but I wouldn't call it absolutely mad. Mandatory. The story really picks up towards the end, but it takes forever to get there, with not much happening beforehand. For a realm of magic, it doesn't utilize magic as much as it does creatures and machinery. It's honestly a shame that we didn't explore this story for Charmcaster more, and even though we got a solid taste for it here, the episode itself, especially the first half, is really lacking. What are you gonna do now? I don't know. I just... don't know.